Alert Master is a network monitoring and firewall program so that you control how applications access your network and the internet. For example, you can make an app like Firefox or Windows itself block all incoming and outgoing connections to websites like Reddit, Facebook, and Twitter. Maybe you don't want an app to access any connections over LAN. This can all be done with Portmaster. In addition, Portmaster includes a slew of privacy and security features. The app lets you block ads, trackers, links to malware, and other unwanted content. I featured this app in my 12 apps and utilities for Windows video. So check out that video when you're done here. In this one, I'll be helping you get up and running with Portmaster from Safing. Portmaster is available for Windows and Linux, specifically Debian, Ubuntu, and Fedora. Let's talk pricing. So Portmaster is available for free and as a subscription. The free version includes most monitoring features along with the privacy blocking for ads, tracking, and malware. There are two subscription plans, Pro and Plus, each with monthly and annual plans. Honestly though, if you're going to pay for a subscription, just go with the Pro option. Pro will unlock all the monitoring features along with being able to use multiple IP addresses at the same time. Portmaster is very much like a VPN, so if you're already paying 10 bucks a month for a VPN, you might want to consider switching to Portmaster instead. After trying it out, of course. To get started, go ahead and download Portmaster for your system, in my case Windows, and then run through the installation. Installation is pretty quick, but it will need to download around 300 megs of data. Once installation is complete, you will be prompted to restart your system. After restart, you should see a Portmaster icon in your notification area. For your first time, you will be prompted with this quick setup guide. Here you can choose what type of content you want to block as far as ads, malware, and other unwanted content. I'll go ahead and leave these at the default and go to next. Under Secure DNS, you can set up a DNS, such as Cloudflare, AdGuard. We'll go ahead and leave those at the default. And this here is letting you know how to get help on certain options. Anytime you see this little icon in the application, click it and it'll show you help about that particular option. Now we have Portmaster running. Of course, it's in free mode. If you went ahead and purchased the plan, go ahead and click on the login subscription button here and enter your login credentials. I'm on the pro model, which grants you up to five devices that you can connect to at the same time with your Portmaster account. Each device will be given a unique name as well. When you log into your saving account under devices, you can see all the devices connected using your Portmaster account. We can see the status and choose to deactivate your account on that device. Let's look at navigating this application. On the left here, you have a list of all your applications that are currently using your network. And when you open an application, like I have Firefox here, you'll see Firefox pops up in the list of applications. If you click on an application, you can monitor all of its connections. So we can see here all the domains that Firefox is trying to access. And we can see which connections are blocked and which connections are allowed. You can get back to the main area by clicking on the Portmaster logo at the top here. Clicking on the little arrow next to an application shows you how many connections are being made. So right now, Firefox is on one connection and it's connecting to Firefox.com. In this main area here, you can see all the features you have access to, such as secure DNS, the privacy filter, network history, and the Safing Privacy Network, or their version of a VPN. Under recent activity, you've got more information about your current connections, such as connections blocked, active connections, data sent and received, and the SPN identities, which are different IP addresses, which we'll look into later in the video. Right here shows you all the connections by country. You've got applications which have been blocking connections and a map of all your current connections. On the far left side is the sidebar Clicking this button takes you to network activity where you can see all the connections being made on your system. And you can filter by allowed and blocked providers, country, and domain. So if I wanted to see all connections made to Canada, we can see all the connections allowed and blocked for Canada. This next tab shows you all the applications Portmaster has access to or has had access to that you can go through and modify. This button with the little circle thingy is a map of the Safing SPN network. Again, their version of a VPN. This next button is for your global settings. Applications can use global settings or app specific settings to override the global ones. This button down here gives you some quick shortcuts for checking for updates, reloading the interface, clearing DNS cache, and so on. And this last button at the bottom here allows you to restart Portmaster or shut it down. 
Let's look at monitoring in more detail. In this example, I'll be using Firefox. If I click on Firefox, we get these graphs of connections and the data that's being transferred over the network, along with a list of all the connections. If you click on a domain, you'll get more information about the connection, such as the protocol, whether it's encrypted, the IP address, and most importantly, the reason in the applied setting. Reason tells you why the connection was in the applied setting that was used to allow or block the connection. If you click on the little dots here, you can apply the app specific settings or the global settings to this domain or block the domain entirely. Let's look at this one, this telemetry mozilla.com. We can see that it has a little red icon indicating that the connection is being blocked. And here under applied settings, one of the filters that we have set is being used to block the connection. Like mentioned earlier, you can view all these connections by allowed and blocked, by provider, country, domain, and under more, you can see all connections made over LAN, internet connections, and even device local connections. Let's talk about SPN. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the little circle icon to get to the SPN map. SPN or Saving Private Network is Saving's take on a VPN. When SPN is enabled, all outgoing connections will get bounced around to multiple servers to help stop websites from identifying you. It's basically the multi-hop feature found in most traditional VPNs. If I open up Firefox and search my IP, we see our IP address is this, in DuckDuckGo. And if I go to whatismyipaddress.com, we get a different IP address. So that's the SPN in action, bouncing our connection across various saving servers. You can choose which SPN servers applications route through. If I go to Firefox again, and under SPN exit, which is set to automatic, we can choose which servers to connect to by country. Let's say in Firefox, I want to be in Australia. We'll set that to Australia and I'll go to Florp and set its exit to France. Then when I go to YouTube, for example, we'll see we're on YouTube Australia. And in Florp, if we go to YouTube, we'll see we're in France. So we can be in multiple places at once across various applications. Let's look at blocking connections. Again, I'll be using Firefox. Now I'm stress, I'm only using Firefox simply because it's easier to demonstrate how to block connections. But understand that all of these settings can be used on any application or your entire operating system. So if I go to settings, you can see there are a ton of different things that you can block for the application. You can block an application from accessing the internet entirely by toggling this option. And if I go back to Firefox and go to any website like Reddit, we'll see that Firefox is trying, but it will not be able to connect because it cannot access the internet at all. We can force block LAN, so Firefox cannot access any connections over LAN. We can block an application from accessing device local connections, block P2P connections, and block all incoming connections. Under outgoing rules, you can define specific domains to allow or block. Let's say I wanted to block Facebook. If you click on this little information icon here and click on show more, you get some examples of what you can put for values in this little box. You can put IP addresses, network protocols, and domain using these patterns. Let's go ahead and block all domains from Facebook. We'll select block and I'll do dot facebook.com. And now all connections to Facebook will be blocked. We try to go to Facebook. We'll see that we can't access. And if I go to connections, you can see Facebook was blocked and it shows the reasoning that it's being denied because it matches this Facebook and our outgoing rules from our app settings are being applied. So if we wanted to disable this rule, we know that we can go under app settings and look for outgoing rules. So application settings, we wanna look for outgoing rules and we can see, we can go ahead and remove this by checking it and selecting remove rules. And now we can access Facebook again. Let's look at blocking ads, trackers, malware links, and more. So right here I'm in Firefox and I've got the verge open with 
ads all over the place, clicking on a link on article, loads, ads everywhere. If we go back to Portmaster and I'm going to be using the global settings for this one. Again, that's the little cog icon here. Go to global settings and we'll go all the way down to filter lists. We've got quite a few options that we can choose from. This first one blocks ads and trackers. You can go into more granular detail on how you want to block that content. In this case, for ads, we have various different filter lists that we can choose from or simply check all. We've got malware. So any links known to contain malware will be blocked. Deception, such as phishing links, can be blocked. Mixed ads and trackers work similarly to ads and trackers. Keep in mind that enabling some of these may break certain applications. You can block inappropriate websites, big tech websites, experimental, and lastly, unbreak popular websites. So I'll just go ahead and leave these defaults and then go back to Firefox. And let's do a quick refresh. We'll see that we get no ads. And if we click on the article, we see no more advertisement in the article. One thing you will notice when using Portmaster is that connections to servers and other network devices become inaccessible. Here, I tried to access my NAS, but I get a connection error. If I look under connections, I can see this LAN peer-to-peer -peer incoming is being blocked. Being blocked because of this option, force block incoming connections from our global settings. So I'll go to global settings and disable the force block incoming connection. Give Portmaster a good restart. And now I should be able to access my NAS. Portmaster will generally detect all programs trying to access your network automatically, but you can manually add applications as well. Go down to all apps where you see this screen and then go to manage and create profile. Give it a name. I'll call this our clone you can provide an icon. And here you need to set the process in which this profile will be applied to. We have our path equal to C bin. Our clone, I think that's where my R clone program is. Exe. Yes, yeah, bin R clone dot exe and hit save. Then I'll just search for R clone and I can manage it like I would any other application in Portmaster. Let's touch on some of the pros and cons of Portmaster. While Portmaster behaves similarly to a VPN, it does not seem to have an interface for binding to a P2P client. Also, you may find some websites and apps break with the default settings. It's a bit aggressive out of the box. The user interface can be a bit overwhelming at first, but overall, the app is pretty easy to learn and use. Portmaster pairs well with privacy-focused browsers like Mulvad and Librable. The pricing is reasonable, and the free version should be adequate for many users. System-wide ad and tracking blocking alone is worth a download. And that is a quick guide on Portmaster. Check it out. Thank <laughs> you.